Here's a guy who thinks that free will has to be presupposed in order to blame anybody for anything. Atheists like to blame Christians for all kinds of bad things, but there's a contradiction in their condemnations that actually provides evidence in favor of Christianity. Consider Alex O'Connor's interview last month with William Lane Craig, where the two discuss the Old Testament's references to God commanding Israel to kill the men, women, and children among the surrounding Canaanites. Alex is sympathetic to the idea that defending this divine command is morally repugnant. It's certainly intolerable to my conscience to view the mass unaliving of an entire culture as only unacceptable if it's done without God's permission. Craig is not put off by such an act per se, but only when it's done without God commanding it. You must understand how that sounds, saying it was a blessing for these children to be killed and go to God. I mean, this is something that Dawkins quotes you on directly, and mm-hmm. uh, I, I'm interested in, in you share my assessment here that even, even if he's not correct, I, I can understand why he would hear you say something like that and think that it's, that it's morally repugnant, that it's revolting. And here's Richard Dawkins expressing the same opinion. I feel such contempt for him because of his, I don't know whether you've seen his, what he says, says about the Something about the lights slaughtering the Midianites. And, and Sam Harris makes similar moral accusations against Craig in his debate with him. Whatever he commands is good. So when he commands that the Israelites to slaughter the Amalekites, that behavior becomes intrinsically good because he commanded it. This is why it is meaningless to say that God is good. Because God is the Christian standard of good, saying that God is good is a meaningless tautology. They view anything God does as good simply because he does it, no matter what it is that he is doing. Well, here we're being offered, I'm glad he raised the issue of psychopathy, we're being offered a psychopathic and psychotic moral attitude. Alex, Richard Dawkins, and many other atheists seem to think Christians who defend the unrestricted killing of the Canaanites in the Old Testament are doing something morally blameworthy in making that defense. I don't believe that they're doing something objectively morally blameworthy. Rather, they are doing something that is intolerable to my conscience and which I would like to disincentivize. I'm not going to respond to that specific issue in the Bible in this episode. I'll include links in the description where I and other Catholic apologists have responded to these difficult texts in the Old Testament. What I'm more concerned about in today's episode is reconciling many atheists' moral disgust toward Christians who defend that doctrine or the doctrine of hell or the wrongness of homosexuality. They're disgust towards Christians defending what they consider to be indefensible and those same atheists denying that we have free will. There's no tension between the idea that some acts are morally repugnant to us and the idea that we have no free will. Quite the opposite. I act to deter or disincentivize acts that are intolerable to my conscience precisely because I believe that deterrence and disincentives have at least some deterministic consequences with respect to people's behavior. If I did not believe in determinism at all, there would be no point in trying to deter or disincentivize any behavior. Because if our wills are actually free, if they are not to any degree caused or determined, then deterrences and disincentives would be of absolutely no consequence. Trent would like you to believe that blame makes no sense if we don't have free will, but in reality, the exact opposite is the case. Their reaction to Christians implies they're angry Christians would do something that a rational person should not do. No, it has nothing to do with rationality. Rationality can help us achieve our moral ends, but it can't decide what those ends are or should be. As Hume said, it is not contrary to reason to prefer the destruction of the whole world to the scratching of my finger. He's not saying that there's no difference between the two, or that the difference doesn't matter. His point is that this is ultimately a matter of values, not facts and calculations. They might think that someone as smart as William Lane Craig should have used his brain to not believe such, in their eyes, absurd things, and so Craig can be morally blamed for his choice to defend these beliefs. It's not his beliefs that are the problem with respect to this particular issue, it's his values. He's morally blameworthy insofar as his behavior is amenable to deterrences and disincentives. If he became convinced that God wanted him to commit such an act, and no deterrence could prevent him from doing so, then I would consider it more of a psychiatric issue than a moral one, and would want it to be treated accordingly. Also, what's with the lettering on this podium? Is the Talbot School of Theology a preschool? An atheist might say William Lane Craig should be better. But the assumption one should be better implies that one could have acted differently, acted better than one had already done. 
Well, I wouldn't say that he should be better. Rather, I would say I want him to stop and will try to incentivize him to stop. There would be no point in trying to incentivize him to stop if his will is completely free. My incentives would be of no consequence if that were the case. It is only if determinism is to at least some degree true that there is any point in holding anyone accountable for anything. Even if the claim be better is only an exhortation to change the future, to be better in future behavior, that assumes one has the power to change the future. Yes, that assumes determinism. It assumes that incentives and disincentives have at least some deterministic influence over people's actions. If our actions are completely free, it is then that we have no control over anyone's future behavior, including our own. And there is thus no point in holding them accountable for what they do. And decide what he or she will do. But this seems to contradict another common atheistic idea, that we do not have free will. Exactly the opposite. It depends on the idea that we don't have free will, or at least don't have complete free will. If our decisions are entirely free, then we have no control over them. If our decisions are entirely free and are in no way determined by causes, we can't even accurately say that we make decisions. Rather, it would be the case that decisions just spontaneously happen on their own. And so we are determined to do what we did, and we are not free to do otherwise. Yes, but it is only if incentives and disincentives play at least some role in determining what we will do in the future that there is any point to imposing any incentives or disincentives upon anyone. Alex has made several videos arguing that we don't have free will, and he's sympathetic to Robert Sapolsky's claims that if free will does not exist, then we do not have moral responsibility. At the end of Sapolsky's book, Determined, A Science of Life Without Free Will, he writes, we need to accept the absurdity of hating any person for anything they've done. Ultimately, that hatred is sadder than hating the sky for storming, hating the earth when it quakes, hating a virus because it's good at getting into lung cells. This is where science has brought us. I completely agree that it's pointless to hate anyone for anything, but that doesn't mean that it's pointless to hold people accountable for what they do. Because if determinism is at least to some degree true, then we can reduce the harm that people do to one another by blaming them for behavior we wish to deter. And in his book on free will, Sam Harris writes, Viewing human beings as natural phenomena need not damage our system of criminal justice. If we could incarcerate earthquakes and hurricanes for their crimes, we would build prisons for them as well. Punishing people purely for pragmatic reasons would be very different from the approach that we currently take. My claim is that atheists can only blame Christians and thus hold Christians morally responsible for their beliefs if atheists believe in free will. And my claim is that the exact opposite is true. If our wills are completely free, then incentives and disincentives can have no causal influence over our actions. And it is then that there is no point in blaming people for their actions because their actions would be completely random and spontaneous, and thus not amenable to blame or punishment. If our wills are completely free, then we can't even have any control over our own decisions, let alone anyone else's. But free will, for many atheists, cannot exist in a godless universe. For which atheists? I don't believe that we do have free will, but not because I think it requires the existence of the supernatural. I don't believe that we have free will because everything that happens in our brains seems to be entirely deterministic. However, there are non-deterministic events that are entirely natural. This is clearly true at the quantum level and in certain thermodynamic phenomena. The only reason I don't believe in free will is because there doesn't seem to be any convincing evidence that these kinds of events play any role in how the brain works. I will change my mind if I ever do see any such evidence. No supernatural phenomena, much less God, is necessary for free will to exist, if in fact it does. But this just gives us a reason to abandon atheism, not free will. An argument on the matter might go like this. If God does not exist, we do not have moral responsibility. We do have moral responsibility, therefore God does exist. Premise one is wrong. Free will is not necessary for moral responsibility, and even if it were, God is not necessary for free will. All right, so first, let's define moral responsibility. This means an agent can be praised or blamed for an action. The only point in praising or blaming an agent for an action is if that praise or blame plays at least some role in determining that agent's future behavior. If the agent's will is entirely free, then this cannot be the case. Therefore, if an agent has complete free will, it is pointless to praise them or blame them for anything. If a lightning bolt burns down a house, the lightning cannot be blamed or praised. It has no moral responsibility. 
Right, because praising or blaming lightning is not going to have any deterministic consequences with respect to its future behavior. But if an arsonist burns down a house, he can be blamed. Only if that blame has some deterministic consequence for his future behavior, which would not be the case if he has complete free will. If his will is partly determined and partly free, then the degree to which he can be blamed is inversely related to his level of freedom. The more free will he has, the less he is to blame. But what is the root of the blame? It can't just be in physical causation. A lightning bolt may be physically responsible for a house burning down because it was the physical cause of the fire. If the bolt had not struck, the house would probably still be standing. But the lightning bolt is not morally responsible. That's because the behavior of a lightning bolt will not be affected by incentives and disincentives. Therefore, there is no point in trying to praise or blame lightning for anything. Similarly, with people, we only blame them for what they do insofar as that blame can play at least some role in determining their future behavior. That's why mental health is taken into account when putting someone on trial. We don't blame people for their behavior if they are too delusional for their behavior to be susceptible to the causal influence of praise or blame. everyone who helps me out on Patreon, you're a big help. Thanks so much.